So welcome back. So the point that we've got to so far is that we have found the CDF for our random variable t. And remember, our random variable t is x over y, where x was standard normally distributed and y was the square root of a chi-squared distribution with new degrees of freedom, i.e. it was this part of the real t distribution. It is almost the t distribution, except that we haven't scaled by this uh, value, the square root of new, and we'll do that final little tweaking right at the end. Anyway, we've got that the CDF for this is given by this integral, and we've just worked out that this bit here, the integral from 0 to infinity of r to the power of nu e to the negative half r squared dr is given by this thing, 2 to the power of nu minus 1 over 2 times gamma of nu plus 1 over 2. So what we're now going to do is replace that in this formula. We're also going to do some cancellation. So this 2 to the power of nu over 2, this cancels with this half to the power of nu over 2, uh, a half to the power of nu over 2. And we've also got 2 to the negative a half here. That is 1 over the square root of 2, which combines with this square root of 2 here. So we can separate this out to be the square root of 2 times the square root of pi to give us 2. And that 2 will cancel with this here. So we'll get some nice cancellation here. So when we perform these cancellations, this is what we end up with. So I've pulled out the gamma of nu plus 1 over 2 out to the front. So remember, this integral has now gone. We've just got this here. And then we've just got one integral left, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t. And I've pulled out things that are constant with respect to this integral. And this is one of these things. So gamma of nu plus 1 over 2. And then the other constants that survive is the square root of pi survives. So that's come here. And then the gamma of nu over 2, that also survives. So that's out here as well. Everything else has gone, uh, and I'll just again explain why. So if we split this into 2 to the power of nu over 2 times 2 to the power of minus a half, then the 2 to the power of nu over 2 cancels with the half to the power of nu over 2, because this is effectively 1 over 2 to the power of nu over 2. So that cancels with that. Then this 2 here cancels with the square root of 2 here and the other 1 over the square root of 2 that we've got from 2 to the power of minus a half. So that's where they've gone. And that leaves this, this, and the square root of pi as the only things that survive, and they are out here. And this is looking very nice because we see all of these things up here. Okay, yes, we're missing this square root of nu, but that's going to come when we do this final alteration where we multiply through by the square root of nu right at the end. That's why that's missing at the moment. So now we just need to try and get this thing from what we've got here. So we're left with the integral from 0 to pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t. And then the bit that we couldn't pull out because it has a theta in is the sine to the power of nu minus 1 of theta. So we've still got this integral here. And remember, this is the CDF of our um, random variable t, not the PDF. So now comes the time to integrate to get the PDF. Remember, this is the PDF of the t distribution that we're trying to derive. So we're now going to differentiate with respect to little t, and you can see that we're then going to be able to apply the first fundamental theorem of calculus to this. So I've written this out. So the PDF of our t distribution now is the derivative of this. This is all just a constant, so we can pull this out of the differentiation. So we've still got all of this kept exactly the same. And now we've got the derivative with respect to t of this integral, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t sine to the power of nu minus 1 of theta d theta. And we'll now apply the first fundamental theorem of calculus to this. Now again, the first fundamental theorem of calculus would be really simple if we just had a t up here, because then we just get that by the first fundamental theorem of calculus, it is the integrand evaluated at t. We haven't just got t, we've got a function of t up here. So we'll get by the chain rule that it is the integrand evaluated at this function of t times the derivative of this function of t. So doing this now, so this integrand sine to the power of nu minus 1 evaluated at this. Now it's better now to switch back to writing this as sine theta brackets all to the power of nu minus 1, because that's what this means after all. So we've got sine evaluated at pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t, 
all to the power of mu minus 1. So that's that integrand evaluated at this. And then times by the derivative of this. Well, this is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. And then the derivative of tan inverse of t is 1 over 1 plus t squared. And remember, that derivative is valid for all t values, whether they are positive or negative. So we don't need to worry uh, about this having any problems. This is wonderful. So now, this is equal to this thing here. All we now need to do is work with this thing here. So we'll apply the compound angle formula for sine to write this out. So applying the compound angle formula, we get that sine of pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t is sine of pi by 2 times cos of tan inverse of t plus cos at pi by 2 sine of tan inverse of t. But this is simple because cos at pi by 2 is 0, so this bit goes, and sine at pi by 2 is 1. So all we actually end up with is that this thing here is just cos evaluated at tan inverse of t. So we need cos evaluated at tan inverse of t to the power of nu minus 1. So we get that this thing here is equal to cos evaluated at tan inverse of t to the power of nu minus 1. So now we need to think about what is cos of tan inverse of t. Well, tan inverse of t is an angle, remember. It's an angle that came from a triangle, this triangle in particular, where you have adjacent here of length 1, opposite here of length t, and then it's this angle. Tan inverse of t is giving you this angle. So we now want to take cos of that angle. Well, what is cos of that angle going to be? Basic trigonometry, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. This hypotenuse is going to have length 1 squared plus t squared square root of that, so the square root of 1 plus t squared. Therefore, cos of phi is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. So that's what this is going to come out as. Now, you might get worried you might say, I'm happy with that for positive t values, because then you end up with a positive angle. Yes, I completely agree with that for those positive angles, but what about the negative angles? What about the negative t values that give negative angles? Well, I say to you, don't worry about that, because cosine, remember, is an even function. It gives you the same value for a positive angle as it gives you for a negative angle. So, for those negative angles, we want them just to have the same values as for the equivalent positive angles. And look at this formula that we've got here. It's 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. So you can see that for a positive t value and for, a neg and for the corresponding negative t value, you'll get the exact same angle, uh, sorry, the exact same answer. And those positive and negative t values, those will give the corresponding positive and negative phi angles. Therefore, this looks as though it's all going to work out fine, and it is all fine. So even for the negative t values, this is a valid formula that I'm going to replace in here. So I'm going to get rid of all of this and just replace it with 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And I hope you completely agree with that for positive t values, but I hope you also can see why that's going to work for negative t values as well, because of the fact that the cosine is this even function. So putting that all together now, this is the formula I end up with for my PDF of my t random variable. So I've got this constant that is still here, gamma of nu plus 1 over 2 divided by the square root of pi times gamma of nu over 2. That hasn't changed. And now what I've got is I've got the 1 over 1 plus t squared times this um, 1 over 1 plus t squared to the power of a half to the power of nu minus 1. So I'm, I've written this as 1 over 1 plus t squared to the power of a half, so that we can combine it with this. That half then needs to be multiplied by this nu minus 1, so you'll get 1 over 1 plus t squared to the power of nu minus 1 over 2, but then if you combine it with this one, that will then give nu plus 1 over 2. So that's what we overall get here. We've got 1 over 1 plus t squared all to the power of nu plus 1 over 2. That's what you get when you combine this bit that came from differentiating this and um, the bit that came from this to the power of nu minus 1. So that then is my formula for the PDF of this t random variable that is almost the um, full t distribution. We haven't quite got it into this form. Um, you can see that in this formula, they instead of putting nu plus 1 to the power of uh, over 2, they've put a minus there. So they flipped things over. So we could do that. We can just 
write this as 1 plus t squared to the power of minus nu plus 1 over 2, and then we're in a form more similar to what they've got up there. So I've dragged the picture of what we're aiming for down here, and now what I'm doing is just showing how this thing that we've got here can be put in a form similar to this. So all I've done is we've kept the constant exactly the same, but now I've said this is 1 plus t squared to the power of minus 1, and then I just need to multiply the minus 1 with this to get minus nu plus 1 over 2, which is the way they've written it here. So you can see this is almost what we've got here. The difference is that we need a square root of nu with the constants, and we also need a nu over here. And all of that is going to come from just doing that final transformation and multiplying this random variable that I've got by the square root of nu, and it will give us this final formula. So final step then now. So apologies, but we are going to rename this random variable that we've been calling t, which has this PDF. We're going to rename it now s, and that's so that we can call our final random variable, which is truly a t distribution, the t random variable. So t is going to be equal to the square root of nu times s, where s is this thing we've worked out, so it's x over y, where x is normal naught 1, and y is the square root of a chi-squared distribution with new degrees of freedom. So how do we do this really simple transformation? So just a reminder of basic random variable transformations. Again, we'll argue using CDF, so if we want the probability that, well, clearly the range space of this is going to be the same as the range space of this one, um, because this one's is negative infinity to infinity, this is just a constant, so clearly the range space remains negative infinity to infinity. So if we want the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t, all we need to do is look at the CDF for our random variable big S, so we just need to look at the probability that big S is less than or equal to t divided by the square root of nu, because that value, t divided by the square root of nu, if you times that by nu, you'll then get, um, which is the transformation that you're making when you go from uh, S to t, uh, you'll then get t. So everything that satisfies this in the range space for S, when you transform it into the range space of t, is going to satisfy this. So now if we differentiate both sides, we'll get the PDF for our final t random variable is equal to differentiate this and we'll get the PDF for our s random variable, which is this, evaluated at this thing, t over the square root of nu, but we also need to times it by the derivative of this with respect to t because of the chain rule. So we'll get that the derivative of this is going to be 1 over the square root of nu. So we'll get 1 over the square root of nu times this PDF, so that's what I've got here, gamma at nu plus 1 over 2 divided by the square root of pi times gamma of nu over 2, and then times 1 plus t squared over nu now, because we're evaluating this PDF not at t, but at t over nu, or, or, or t over the square root of nu. So if you put that in there, you get t squared over the square root of nu squared, which is, of course, just over nu, to the power of minus nu plus 1 over 2. And oh, look, this is now this formula. So we've got the nu that appears here, and we've got the square root of nu that appears here. So you can combine that square root of nu with the square root of pi to make the square root of nu pi. So we would now say that this random variable t is distributed according to the t distribution with new degrees of freedom. So what we have done there is we've started with the definition of a t random variable as this quotient of a normal random variable divided by the square root of a chi-squared with new degrees of freedom random variable scaled by the square root of nu, and we have derived its PDF, this monster here. So we'll end there. I hope you've managed to follow that. Thank you for watching.